Good evening. This is uh, the Town of Saugus Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for May 23rd. Um, let us start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. Led by John Cannon. Pledge of Allegiance flag. The United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I will be repeating a few times that 160, um, 367, 167 Hamilton Street is being continued next month in case anybody else comes in they know not to sit around. Um, this is the uh, Board of Appeals and I'd like to introduce the members, Peter, Peter Rossetti, Stephanie Romano, John Cannon, Bob Northup and Chris Riley. Well, they are mixed up because they're all over the place. Right? Um, the way we normally conduct our hearings is as ger generally informal. We follow the agenda as it appears in the paper, unless somebody for personal pressure needs to be heard out of order. Uh, make that known as soon as you have make, want to make that request. Um, there are three reasons to come in from the Board of Appeals. One is to seek a variance. The other is to seek a special permit to do something to your property. And the third is to seek an appeal against the decision of the building inspector. I've asked all the board members to view the properties and be prepared to make decisions this evening if we have enough information presented for us at this hearing. Once the board has made its decision, the clerk will have 14 days to prepare the decision and get that decision to the town clerk and for it to be stamped in and filed into the official record. Um, from the date the town clerk stamps the decision in, there's a period of 21 days, which time which anyone who's not satisfied with our decision can file an appeal to the court. Um, if anyone wants to do this, Stephanie can certainly um, fill them in on procedure, exactly how that's done. I'm going to move right through it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt and ask them at any time. At this point, I will ask anyone who wishes to speak this evening to be sworn in at one time. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. All right. The first petition we have is 24 Farrington Ave. And if you go approach the podium and give your name and number. Yes, and Mr. Rossetti is sitting out on this one. There's five members. Uh, Laurie Stratikos, 24 Farrington Ave. And Stephen Williams, 24 Farrington Ave. I just want to do a little housekeeping first and um, I can, there was a petition here and it was granted and continued based upon a proper plot plan below a square footage. I think we should probably withdraw that it's and then open this as a, this has been opened as a completely new one. So don't worry about it, <laughs> but just for our sake, want to have you verbally withdraw that prior petition of which would have been filed in, in April of 24. Okay. That's okay? Yes. All right, Stephanie, you got that? Mm -hmm. So that's withdrawn. Now we're on to the new one. That's where we are today. Um, on the petition of 24 Farrington Ave Realty Trust, owners of the property at 24 Farming Farrington Ave, lot number 208 dash number 212 plan number 2027 they speak of variance for a pre-existing 10 yard side back where 15 is required and a possible front yard side back where 20 is required mr chairman yes <clears throat> just a question on on this uh withdrawal just now yeah these are really different Petitions, right? Yes, we're talking a new petition. 
Okay. My, the reason I bring it up is that the new petition we have for May 23rd today is about a variance on setbacks. The prior that we voted last time conditionally was for a special permit to make the two additions. So if we withdraw I, from I the last time, I yeah. agree. it's not advertised here to make a special permit. So I, I'm not really sure why we why would- Why were they special permits or additions? I'm, I'm looking at the last agenda. Well, I'm, I'm just not talking out loud, Peter. Why would they have the been lot special coverage permits? In, and this one's for a non-conformed lot. Pardon? The last one was for lot coverage. And this is for, seven and this is for a non-conformed lot. So on the last one, as long as we came under 50%, but the engineer made a mistake. So we corrected that with the 25% lot coverage. And I think that already got filed. Which was oh, already. Not... And then <laughs> this close. one is for a non conforming I don't lot. think it's 25 yet, but it's very close. It's very close. I, I came up with like 26 and a half. No. Oh. <laughs> my amateur. Yeah. Well, that's important. No, right. In, in my amateur edition came up with like 26 and 27. So it's not. It's not the 50 it was, it's not the 24 it came in on the second time. That was obvious. It is just that slightly bit over. But you're right. We, so it's a special permit due to the lot coverage. So <clears throat> we voted the special permit last time due to the lot coverage. And unless there was a complaint, I'm not sure why we would with, withdraw that. All right. We, we don't with, we won't with, we won't with, I take back, we're not withdrawing that. Hey, that's why I asked for help on it. Okay. All right. Yeah, good. I just want to get it right you know, so that if we vote you know, the variance, that yeah, they can start building. Um, okay. So we're, just, we're still just on to this one. This new one comes in, came in, and so we're just dealing with the variance on this. Um, I know we left one variance off there, but I'm going to go along and, grant, and ask that to be granted. Um, it does leave it open to some of you appealing or objecting to it, and then you have to come back. I don't think anyone will, but you have to come back. And what I'm referring to, if you look at the, have the members of the board seen the latest plot plan, <laughs> which I think is version number three? Yes. Is that the one then? Have. Looks like it. Six feet over here. Six six feet, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. So the variances that I've seen that I need to take over the meeting, I know I asked you to say what you have to do, but we'll talk about it in a minute. Was on the right yard that we turned out. This is why I'm waiting for me over. I don't know why this survey gave us the proposed dimensions when he did the dimensional intensity of a child and did know the existing buildings. I don't know why anyone would do that, but he did. That's where he gave us the answer. Here you could go down and look at the building. It's six feet. The existing house is six feet from the other. The existing house is six feet from the sideline. I think we all agree with that. Yes. Okay, so you need a variance on that. Do you know anything about the right of way in the front? The plot plan shows this. It says city, so I guess it's of course the town, but it shows the city has a right of way. Do you know anything about that? No, it's, the house has been there for whatever, 100 years. Okay. No sidewalks ever been put down there. There'll never be sidewalks down there. Because you can't, there's no way to get through. There's no way that you can get through. It's a dead end street. All right. Well, there's, according to this, there is a right of way there. So you have to be aware that the city does have that there. Oh, yeah. You know. And yeah, they yeah, could yeah. come at some time. I don't know what it's for. You could find out by researching it, but that, of course, is an attorney and money. But it could be a water and sewer right away. It could be almost anything. Right. Okay. And with that right away, they could come down and say, no, we have to dig that up. Okay. Yep, you can't. Fine. Okay. You have to be aware of that. Okay. All right. 
that's what confuses me a little bit on the front side yard the front lot coverage and what we should be using so I, I do want to mention again if I can have help from the board that do we go to on the frontage do we go to where the the right of way is or do we go to the street okay um, so the right of way would be you're asking for a front yard variance of 7.3 feet the agreement that's what it looks like on the drawing yeah okay um, then what was left off was there is a shed back there and a shed does require 10 feet from from the back and 10 feet from the side um, it does, the measurement doesn't show on the plot plan but it looks like that it's about two feet from the side and maybe at least five to five feet from the back I think on one corner it's three feet and on the other corner it's five feet and and I do have the plan I don't know which one you have but this one shows a six foot setback you have a plan that shows yeah. a setback on the shed uh, on the side you mean yeah yeah we we have that one so we six, have that oh, you have the six foot yeah so now we're asking about no, okay yeah the shed we so can't see what we can't see what the setback yeah, on the shed it's four feet there, I mean five feet there and three feet there okay what is it from the back you know oh it's uh gotta be at least 15 feet yeah I mean it, it it looks like it's about eight feet here if that shed is eight feet wide it's about the same this way now we'll say six feet for the back just to be safe okay okay don't mind that right yeah that's good so we, we're looking for a variance for there for a six feet to the for the shed for six feet from the back and we'll just call it two feet from the sideline just to, again to be on the safe side yeah okay is that all right Peter um when I added up the lot coverage there was a few things that I couldn't um, definitely come to. I couldn't see over the stairways if it has an awning over it. You count that as lot coverage. That wasn't noted on the plan. Um, and a few other things. But if I put a guess in there for what that should be, um, it's still the lot coverage isn't that 73% they originally came in. It's not 24%. It's about 27%. Okay, and I don't have any issue with 27%. I don't know if any other members feel okay with that. Nope. All right. Um, any questions from the board at this point? Nope. Nope. Okay. Um, and the last thing I wanted to address, so this came through the, the building inspector also, is concerned with parking. There is a six bed, it's a six bedroom house, correct? Yes. So there's a lot of cars there. There's you, you have two adult children, you have three in-laws put in, you have your, you have your incredible boats out front, and <laughs> you got a lot going on. Those are leaving. <laughs> what? They're, They're going up leaving. the lake. Going up the lake. All right, so that's it just yet. So you don't keep them there all winter? No. No. They stay up there. I just brought them home to change the oil, that's it. Okay. All right, so you also have, you do have that trail that's permanently parked on the street. So you're going to have to just work on getting things off the street. Yep, yeah. no problem. I mean, well, the building inspector is going to be throwing fines and penalties at you. We'll be out of it. Yeah, that's no problem. But if he goes by next week and the, and the, the trail is still there that's been there, he's probably going to drop a ticket on it. Okay. So you got to try to get everything into the into the yard and off the street. Okay. I mean, when I went, I want to be honest, when I went down there on Saturday, I mean, I said if a fire engine ever had to come down the street, it'd be scary. You had your two cigarette boats there. Granted, they were off the street. The trailer was there. The next door neighbor had that bay liner there that's huge. The guy across the street has this park model RV there. Oh, I know. I mean, it's just so congested. And I mean, you're not responsible no, for them, I know that. No, we control what we can but, do, and we, we, will, we will take care of that. But so cars get pushed into the street because people are have boats off the street. If a fire engine ever had to back down there, I don't know how they could get 
to get to the necessary property. Well, the neighbor put the boat in his driveway. I know he did, yeah. but I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, I and that says you're not responsible for the neighbor, but I'm just saying. Right. There's a lot going on in the street. You've got to get, you got to get the the parking inside the property. Okay. Okay. No okay. Um, any questions from the board at all? I have no questions. No. I, I don't have any questions. It just I'm just looking at the plan and the pictures I took at the at the site last time. It looks like there's one, two, three, four, at least five parking spots plus the garage, which fits at least two cars. Yes. So even six bedrooms, there's there's at least seven parking spots there on off of the street. So I'm I'm comfortable with that. I, I agree with you. My paper it does show. Yeah. <laughs> That there's enough there, but they and they have the two boats there and the two trucks there that pull them and other vehicles. Okay. You're yep. all over the street. Yep. Okay. I'm I'm just saying I'm so, not yeah. sure we can ask for oh, know, seven I, spots. It, it looks like the plan, and I don't know if the garages are just full with storage either. I don't know if you park vehicles. Oh, you can't get the car in the garage with the boat there. Get rid of it. We're getting rid of it. Wait, the boats will be gone. <laughs> all right. Um, anything else? Anybody from the audience have any comments? Seeing none, what's the wish of the board? Motion to close the hearing. Second. Seconded. And who wants to read this in? Uh, I can take it. Okay. Um, so Mr. Chairman, so on the petition of 24 Farrington Ave Realty Trust, owners of the property at 24 Farrington Ave, lot number 208-212, Plan number 2027, um, seeking several variances, and I'll, I'll list them. A variance for a six foot side yard setback, a variance for a 7.3 um, foot setback to the front, a six foot side yard setback uh, uh, for the shed, and a, I'm sorry, a six foot rear, rear setback to the shed, and a two foot side yard setback to the shed um, and for lot coverage um, not to exceed 27 percent um, make the motion to approve this variance um, due to the shape soil um, and topography which affect the land and the position on the lot do I have a second to that? Second. Okay. Uh, Stephanie? Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. Okay, you're, you're all set. Thank um, you so much. I appreciate it. Thank Just you. Remember the appreciate it. Thing, or you're going to be mad. We'll you're going to think back and be mad at me and <laughs> <laughs> when you get that citation. He's... You're not invited to the party. Yeah. <laughs> no ride on the boat? <laughs> no, thank you for riding the boat. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. Good luck. All right, um, the next, on the petition of NBC Properties LLC, owners of property at 163, 167 Hamilton Street, lot number one and plan number 25, excuse me, lots number one and 25, plan number 3026, a special permit to alter a pre-existing non-conforming structure to allow for an addition of an existing building adding 45 beds. And the petitioner on this has um, requested a continuance. Stephanie, did he send in that an email to you or anything? Or um, excuse me. verbal? We have a letter. We have a letter, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, just uh, to it quickly, it's from Attorney Richard Magnus representing him. Please be advised that the applicant for the above matter, this 163-167 Hamilton Street, scheduled for hearing this Thursday, May 23rd, hereby requires a request to the board's next meeting on June 27th. <coughs> And see if Stephanie gets that back. And do I have a, a motion? Yes. 
Do I have a second on that? Second. Stephanie? Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. I mean, next is on the petition of BJK Realty Trust, owners of property of 1268 Broadway, lot number 234.2, plan number 2027, seeking a special permit to construct a 10 by 20 dumpster pad and fence and variance for a 28.6 front setback where 50 is required. And the petition is representative. Yep. Mr. Uh, Chairman, members of the board, David Dwyer, Audie and Dwyer Lanceveres at 59 Appleton Street. I represent the uh, Realty Trust who's proposing this um, dumpster pad and enclosure. Um, currently, the dumpster is not in an enclosure and they're on the side of the building. Um, this is an effort to move it from the building and uh, as far away from the um, from the uh, residences as possible. Uh, and that's why we're seeking the variance for the front at Broadway and the front at Pleasant. Do I have any questions from the board? Yes. I'm sorry, Peter, I can't hear you. Why are you putting the dumpster up front instead of in the back? Um, to keep it away from the residences that are in the back. Okay, I, I think in the past <clears throat> it had been in the back before, and I, I checked with several residents. No one seemed to have any problems with it. So moving it up front, um, <clears throat> I, I thought we... Uh, tried to place those oh, so they're not in, not in front of the buildings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understood. Um, I think it makes it uh, for ease of getting to it, the dumpster, to be emptied. Um, and I have no knowledge of where the dumpster was prior. Okay. Currently, they're on the side of the building. Okay. And not enclosed. The dumpster is going to be used primarily for, I, <clears throat> I believe, in the buildings. There's um, two food places. Uh, yeah, UPS. Waste. Yeah, there's a UPS. There's a um, uh, two restaurants. I don't know if they're both active yeah. currently. I believe we're out of Asia, which became an in Indian. I think that's inactive right now. Yeah, one, I think one of the two restaurants is inactive, at least to my knowledge. Out of Asia, I don't believe is there anymore. There's also a church in that building, I think on the second floor. The church is down in the basement. What's that? Unless it moved, it was always down in the basement. Yeah, I don't know what's in the basement. Is the church in the basement? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, and this dumpster would be enclosed by a uh, six-foot vinyl fence, so it'd be hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments from the board? Yeah, yeah Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, I share the same concern. Um, I appreciate that the, the owner is trying to up, upgrade the property, enclose the enclose the dumpster, um, and I do uh, appreciate that he's trying to move it away from the residences. Um, however, it is. That spot is one of the first things that people see when they drive into Saugus. It's a 200 square foot dumpster pad. Um, I, I would prefer to see it located someplace else, mm -hmm. even if it were enclosed on the side of the building where it is today. Um, I would be able to support that. Um, I would just be one vote, but I couldn't support it being right out on the street. Okay. It, it will be, again, it will be enclosed by a six-foot vinyl fence, so it would look yeah. like a six-foot vinyl fence. Yeah. The dumpster would be in, in, inside of that 10 by 20 area. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, and, and so if it, it was... Just seeing how some of the other dumpsters in town, it just, just the reality is that dumpsters mean trash and garbage. Um, doesn't always make its way into the dumpster. Um, there, are, there are rodents, there's wind, there are storms, things blow around and things move for lots of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, 
it could number one be quite unsightly it could number two so close to the highway be a potential hazard um, I'd really like to see it moved further from the road okay so if we if, if we uh, if we decide to move this over near the building or to the rear of the building I don't believe we would require a variance or special permit on that one of the hazards of having a dumpster right up front uh, might invite someone other than the tenants in the building to make use of it and they may as as my colleague said they may not put it inside the dumpster but inside the enclosure correct and things tend to blow around pretty good out there mm -hmm. so I, I understood I like to see it in a different location also um, so that being said um, maybe we will withdraw without prejudice um, understanding that I don't think it's going to go where it is I don't think you, I agree with Mr. I don't think you have four out of five yes I, what you need. I can see that coming <laughs> Um, so um, I'd and like you to said you might not need to come back in front of us to correct in a different position depending upon where we put it um, um, if we put it to the side of the building um, then we don't need variance yeah I, I did hear from one neighbor who was um, concerned with with people coming down the street just tossing it where it's you can meet it from the you reach this from the dead end Everyone from the end of pleasant Ave. tossing it into that area and just taking off mm -hmm. um in fact they don't blame the restaurants in there but they also have a lot of problem with people don't want to go out on the highway so they order a pizza in there or, or take out when the other restaurant was there and just go down to the end of the, that street and then fly down the street yep. that's not something i don't know how the restaurants could control that um, as long as they're telling, I think they've agreed in the past not to let their um, takeout people use that for deliveries. Of yeah, I, I, I did and recognize that. I know that's not that. your concern, and that's not part of this. But that's a concern. Yep. That's been the con a concern in the neighborhood, um, just the use of the street. Um, I guess are all those pizza deliveries. <laughs> Some of them are from the people that work at the pizza shop. And then they you know when they're in a hurry they want to make the attempts they want to get the pizza there mm -hmm. hot i understand all that so you know they're flying up and down that street so that's another problem that neighbors have mentioned but i think just the fact that if you put this pad right there it's just such a close proximity to the street that you know people will throw stuff in there mm -hmm. and then just take off yeah i understood I, I understand right. so I, I'd like to all right say I um, withdraw without, without prejudice, prejudice. Right. that's fine um, do I have a motion to allow the petitioner is there anyone in the audience who would like to make any comment yes sir your name and sure. address hi I'm Phil Sokogo that Amory in Venezia where the fence that's attached to that parking lot that's okay. our house and the dumpster literally if this is my bedroom the dumpster is probably that door and like like most of the conversation the dumpster currently or the where the new one will be the dumpster that where it is today right now okay is is visible like looking right out my window it's right there and it it gets full every day and doesn't get emptied every day it's um it used to be in the back back uh and it was a, a much better place okay and and like you guys had said uh, you people have said um people coming off of the highway you know oh i think that's there while i go to ups i think i'll empty my entire car the, the interior of my car is dirty they go there they, a couple of men I've seen unfortunately I'm retired and and sometimes I'm out the window and and I'm looking right at a man getting 
taking care of business before he leaves to go back on the highway. Yep. And it's a horrible place for a dumpster to be, visibly for me. All right, well, Mr. Dwyer will work on putting it in a better spot, I'm sure. Uh huh. And, and you know, it's, since that, we used to have a neighbor next door, but they demoed that house. Okay, yeah, and, I remember that. And that also allows more people now, like you also had said, up down that street and for the longest time we're using it as an access to get to route one and get off of route one right and there's kind of a something to stop them but it's really not people just move it out of the way yeah. or or the business that's behind the building the restaurant building they have their own plows they have their own bobcats they're getting deliveries at two o'clock in the morning in that parking lot next to that dumpster with I, I don't know the, the amount of poundage but at least over my head of salt and sand and it, it just that that parking lot is no longer a parking lot they used to close at nine o'clock at night like it used to when when the other restaurant was there it was just strictly just a parking lot now it's deliveries dump dump salt uh the bobcat takes like four hours to empty that salt to bring it to the back of the building so two o'clock three o'clock in the morning four o'clock in the morning I'm witnessing that every single other day the entire winter and in the summertime now the dumpster as well is I, I don't want to get off we're really just yes I understand those, those are legitimate complaints I understand I understand um, and Mr. Dwyer can even bring him to the owner that this uh -huh. was mentioned there tonight you okay. know about yeah, being a good stoppage from cars getting through and and stuff, but really we're dealing with the dumpster pad, right? Not everything else. That's almost a complaint to other parties. I well, I I, I, I understand with the dumpster pad. I, I'm at but like think, I'm just looking for sympathy because there's so no, much, understand. you know. I think I trust that they'll come up with a solution and to, on the dumpster part of it and put that in a good spot. Yes, please. I, I yeah, the dumpster without a doubt. To go in the back is the definite answer to that problem right without so a doubt get at it. yeah thank you are oh, you welcome sir thank you thank you anyone else all right so do we have a motion to allow the i got a petition question. i want to ask the uh the no the Mr. gentleman Mr. Northup, you have a question yeah on the property yeah if they could put barriers over here where the parking lot is, so the cars don't come up Pleasant Street and cut through the lot. But that's, that's the not the issue. He's dealing with the dumpster. Oh, well. I understand what you're saying. And he does too. And that's something that he could bring to the yeah. to the owner and they can look at. But he's dealing with the dumpster pad. Okay. <laughs> Correct, Mr. Dwyer? Yeah. You can bring our concerns, but you're dealing with the dumpster pad. To make sure it's really secure that you can't get through it or one. Yeah. And a lot of that parking and the business parking, I believe, isn't from a lot of it isn't from this place. A lot of it is from the barbershop at night, too. They seem to be going all night long. So this and they use that back. I see cars going in there to like freak of that area and I see cars go in there and park at the end there and they go into the barbershop. They use it at the barbershop parking lot, not all front. So that's got nothing to do with your property either. There's but we're just dealing with the pad. There's a church in that barbershop parking lot as well. All right. So there's one over here and one over there. Yeah, well, the, on the other building, the barbershop. Mr. Chairman, uh, motion approved. Second. Second. Mr. Chairman, uh, motion to allow withdrawal of the prejudice. I second. Stephanie? Yes. Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Northrup? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. Okay, thank you.
Yes. Sir. Having gone over and sit down for which, which mm. agenda? Excuse me. All right. So those are just. Um, so you want to set out Robin Court, John? Bobby. Want to set out this one? Yeah, I'll set out this one. That's fine. Okay. And then we'll go as we get to the other ones. On the petition of John Brunel, owner of property at 11 Auburn Court, lot number 62, plan number 1002, seeking a special permit to add a 16 by 12.25 kitchen addition with deck and variance for 10.7 yard side, side yard setback where 15 is required and a pre-existing 51.46 frontage where 100 is required and a pre-existing 5,903 square foot lot where 10,000 feet is required. And the petitioner is here. If you give uh, Stephanie your name. My name is John Brownell. And address, yeah. And you live at Auburn Court? Yes, 11 Auburn Court. Okay. Um, give us an idea of what you want to do. I want to put in a, uh, a 12 foot, three by 16 foot addition with a six foot deck off the back. Um, it's parallel with the house. So we're not going, we're not approaching the neighbor's property. We're just going towards the back of my own property. Okay. And it's remaining a single family note. It's Everybody I've talked to in the neighborhood is all for it. All right. It's remaining a single family home. No accessory unit, one kitchen. Yes, just a kitchen. Okay. No second floor or anything like that. Okay. Um, any questions from the board? Uh, only, only question I think we covered it is that the there'll be stairs on the deck off the rear. Yeah, they'll be in, they'll be in, in the size of the uh, twelve foot three. That's covered so in the, the deck. Will only here. go so far, then the stairs will finish off at the end. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any comments from the audience? Seeing none, what's, what does the board want to do? Second. All right. I'll read it in. The petition to jump Crowell and property at 11 Auburn Court, 1002, seeking special permit to add a 16 by 12.25 in addition with a deck and variance for. A 10.7 side yard setback or 15 is required for pre existing 51.46 permits where 100 is required and pre existing uh, square footage of the lot or 5,093 where 10,000 is required. Grounds for the, uh, the special permit. Uh, the special permit, no more detrimental the variance is uh, position of the height of the lot, it's pre existing and pre existing size of the lot. Okay. Sorry. You did right. That's okay. I should have stopped you. But uh, let's uh, vote on the variance first. And the conditions of these are also, you said remain a single family home, correct? Right. Um, okay. And do I have a second to that? Second. second. And Stephanie? Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. And the special permit? No. Call the roll on the special permit. I'm sorry? Call the roll on the special oh. permit. Oh, wait. Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Rossetti? Yes. Mr. Northrop? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. You're all set. Thank you. Very See, much. Stephanie, on Monday, and she'll go through. See, Stephanie, on Monday, and she'll go through any details. We'll do. Okay, nothing. Okay, thank you. A Tuesday, it's a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Tuesday. <laughs> okay. On the petition of Ian and Archangelo Salzillo, owners of property at 21 Lennox Avenue, lot number 109-1, plan number 1030, seeking a special permit 
to add a 40 by 20 garage with bonus room above and a variance for a 10.6 front yard setback where 20 is 20 10.6 front yard setback where a 20 foot corner lot setback is required and a pre-existing 18.7 side yard setback with 20 is required corner lot setback is required. That wording seems a little bit odd, but let's make sure we get it right. Um, if you could give uh, your names. To Ann Salzillo, 21 Lennox Avenue. Arcangelo Salzillo, 21 Lennox Avenue. And you won't occupy the house? Yes. Um, and it's a single family, you're putting a lodge of days, it's going to remain a single family yes. house. No new kitchen, no accessory. We have not made any plans for it yet, but we want to do it in a garage with an above bonus room. So we just haven't actually gone to the architect yet to do any plans. Well, but we need to know whether or not you plan on putting a... <laughs> A bathroom, possibly. Oh, a bathroom, possibly. I'm talking about. Are you going to put a full apartment? In? No, 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 no. Are you adding a, a full kitchen and bedroom and everything else? No, no. Bonus space upstairs. It's just so the addition is just going to be made up of a bedroom. A bonus space. Yeah. Okay. Know. And bedroom, bonus space, or whatever, and, and a bathroom. Yes. But you don't play. This is going to remain a single family home. Yes. yes. Absolutely. You have no plans. To put, uh, you know, an accessory unit. They call it in law apartment, right? We don't like to use that word. <laughs> but you don't have any plans for that. None. This is remaining a single family it house. It remains a single family home, yes. Okay. Do I have any questions from the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have any questions. I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, I would support this. Um, we do need someone to sit out. I can sit out this one. Okay. And Mr. Riley's off for voting. You could still comment. Yeah, I, it looks pretty straightforward to me. There's, um, I think where we need 20 feet, there's 19.1 feet. Um, it's all perfectly accessible. Um, I would certainly support it. And it's no closer to the road. Any other comments from the board? What? Yeah, I just one note. Any other comments from the board? Or any comments from the audience? I have no comments. I concur with person. Stephanie, do you want to read this one? You want me to read it in? Sure. Okay. Close the hearing. On the petition of Ann Nasangelo Sazillo, owners of the property at 21 Lennox Ave, lot number 109-1, plan number 1030, seeking a special permit to add a 40-foot by 20-foot garage with bonus room above. It's up. Yep. Let's do that. Let's do the special permit special first. Permit. Uh, I would move to grant the special permit on the grounds that it would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing nonconformity. Second. Stephanie, the roll. Ms. Romano. Yes. Mr. Rossetti. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Northrop. Yes. Mr. Travers. Yes. And and now the variance for a 10.6 foot front yard setback where a 20 foot corner lot setback is required and a pre-existing 18.7 foot side yard setback where a 20 foot corner lot setback is required i would move to grant the variance um, due to the shape soil topography of the land position of the house on the property do we have a second uh, Stephanie, the roll. Ms. Romano. Yes. Mr. Rossetti. Yes. Mr. Cannon. Yes. Mr. Northrop. Yes. Mr. Travers. Yes. You're all set. Okay. So on so Tuesday, you can check with Stephanie and she'll take you further on the permit process. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. On the position, position of Ronaldo to Silvera. I apologize if I pronounced it wrong. Owners of property at 442 Main Street, lot number 345, plan number 1034, seeking a special permit 
to enlarge the front entry and rebuild the side stairways and a variance for a 23.2 front setback where 30 is required and a 15.4 stair setback is 20 is required. And if you can give your name. My name. Stephanie. So he's Ronaldo, the owner, and my name is Albalise Manon. I will be representing him. I'm sorry. The, the, the sound system is so bad here. Yes. So his name is Ronaldo. Yeah. Ronaldo, he's the owner, and my name is Albalise Manon, and I will be representing the owner. Oh, it's just been yes. Yes. So we are here to apply for a special permit to enlarge the front entry of the house. The required setback is 30 feet, which is the existing edge of the house. We just want to enclose the entryway. Right now, it's just steps. So the new, the new front setback will be 23.2. And also, we are requesting to rebuild the original stairs to the side. That because of the construction, they got demo, but they are not. They were non-conforming stairs, so we want to be rebuilt because it's an existing entry to the house. Okay. Do I have any questions from the board? I have no questions. So it's pretty simple. And any questions from the audience? Any comments from the audience? So I did. There was something I was trying to figure out. Like with the side stairs that you built, that's just rebuilding them. They're already there. They were there. But because of the construction, they got removed. So we just want to build the same location that they were. But because they're not conforming, we're here to request a special permit to get them rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah. So they were there. It was just kind of confusing because they were building a set of staircase and there's no change in the dimensions. Yeah. I couldn't really see it out front. Yeah. Didn't jump out to me because it's the same dimensions that was listed from existing to proposed. Yeah. And in addition, I'm saying how. How could this be? Um, you certainly, you keep your house very nice and you've done a good job in building it up. That's obvious to me. Okay. Do I have any comments from the board? Motion to close the hearing. Okay. Um, well, let me, any comments from the audience first? Now you motion to close motion the hearing. Motion to close the hearing. That's second. And Stephanie? Yes, Mr. Northrop. I'll read it in, please. Is Mr. Northrop out on this? Mr. Northrop's out. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. Who wants to read it? Oh, I can take it. Okay. <clears throat> um, on the petition of Ronaldo de Silvera, owner of property at 442 Main Street, lot number 345, plan number 1034, seeking a special permit to enlarge the front entry and rebuild the side stairs. Um, make the motion to uh, grant a special permit where it's the finding of the board that the proposed addition would not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than any existing nonconformity. And on the variance for a 23.2 um, front setback where 30 feet is required and a 15.4 foot stair setback where 20 feet is required, make the motion to approve the variance. Um, due to the shape, soil, uh, and topography, and the position of the house on the lot. That second, and Mr. Dolgani, you can, you can uh, say that you uh, favor if you want to. Are you in favor of this? You can, Mr. Dolgani. You can say you're in favor of it. Yeah. No, no, him. The neighbor. Are you in favor of it? Or just that's all I'm looking for you to say. <laughs> all right. Now, could we uh, have the roll, please, Stephanie? Ms. Romano? Yes. Mr. Riley? Yes. Mr. Rossetti? Yeah. Mr. Cannon? Yes. Mr. Travers? Yes. You're all set. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do I have a motion to close? Motion to adjourn? Okay. Yes. And did you have oh, that before we do adjourn, do you have any questions for us? All right, well, well, it's likely. 
Is it for select the building inspector? It's the building inspector. Yeah. For it sounds like it might be one of the contracts. Um, yeah, we, we don't have any, we're just other citizens. So we don't have power. But I'm just saying we don't have power. That we could we could agree with you all night long, but we don't have any power. Yeah. <laughs> um, why don't we start with uh, Mr. Kelly and it's Dan Kelly in Inspectional Services. Yeah. And I will let him know you're coming. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's a building inspector. It's right inside. If you go in the well, back door, yeah. it's right down inside the back door. There in the, in well, the lower. Dan yeah, Kelly. Mr. Kelly. Okay. But give him. Don't just throw in from. Give him twenty. I'll, I'll talk to him by the, before the end of the day or well, tomorrow. It's just this is tough because tomorrow the half day at town hall. So will I catch up to him? I don't know. And Monday's the holiday, so it might not be Tuesday. Well, Tuesday. No, he has. You can call inspection services, and um, the secretary's name is Debbie, and you can ask her what his hours are, but you don't have to make any special special appointment. And I'll let him know that you're that you're coming in. I'm, I'm aware of the problem. Um, I know what the problems were. Just, um, I'm very good friends with Mr. Bounty, who owned out of Asia, and I think he had a different attitude towards the neighborhood um, that you don't see. Um, let's, but I think we can. Yeah. Whatever else. And if you have a couple of other days. Yeah, we can talk a little bit more of that offline, but can we close this hearing? Motion to close. Second it. Good. So we're we're closed.